Hello Mechanic here. So I have my golf cart up on jack stands and I'd like to do a video on how I did the front suspension because there's quite a bit of engineering and uh, thinking and problem solving on getting this whole system set up. And uh, there's some mistakes I made and had to go back and fix them. But um, let me show you how I did it. So if you guys want to do a project like this with uh, some independent suspension, hopefully this will help you out. So first thing I did is I got the A-arms here from another off-road buggy. And it's a candy, I forget the model anyway. Um, so I got the A-arms here and the shock. And that gave me the pivots, the bolts, and the bushings and all that. So I started with that. But what I had to do from there is pretty much modify everything else. So when I started designing the suspension, I had these suspension arms that were off that uh, off-road buggy. Um, but the front suspension, the front track width of that buggy was very wide. It was like another foot wider than I have here. So I obviously didn't want that. So I had to narrow it up a good bit. And so the way I did that is I mocked it up the whole front end assembly here on my workbench and I made a mount for my uh, spindle here that mounted to the workbench. Then I made another mount over here on the workbench and that gave me my overall width that I want. I knew how wide I wanted it. And so from there I built inward. So I made my spindles then I made my mount, and then I mounted my A-arms, and then that gave me my subframe width right here. Now, if you look at the design, the engineering that went into this, so the bottom one here has more of an angle down than the top one. The top one's not quite horizontal, but it's a lot closer to horizontal than the bottom one. And the pivot point, that pivot point, to that pivot point, so that distance, is longer than that pivot point to that pivot point. The reason I did that with those two things is as this compresses, as this goes up, you're gonna get negative camber. It's gonna come in like this, okay? And so that is good for turning around corners as you get body roll. As the chassis rolls this way, you don't quite get as much uh, positive camber on the front tires as you if you would with these dimensions being the same so you want this to compress and come in so that just gives you a little bit better uh, steering a little bit better performance um, now the real challenge that i found was the steering so when i first did this i had it mocked up on the workbench and ran it through its cycle and measured what's called bump steer so as this travels upward as this steering rod moves it's going to affect your steering like this so as it travels it'll it'll steer either in or out like that and so what you want is as this travels you don't want any bump steer you want this to stay in the same plane but i mounted this much lower i mounted it down here on the frame because it was convenient and it made the steering connection easier and I welded everything in, I had it done, and I put it on the ground, and I compressed the steering, I compressed it, and I had probably about three inches of bump steer. And I thought I was close, but I was way off. So that's when I went to the computer and had to do all of the geometry on this to get this exactly where I need it. Um, but I have, right now, very minimal bump steer now, uh, which, is, which is good. So I got the geometry pretty close. Um, but let me show you what I did on the computer. All right, we're at the computer and I got my drawing pulled up that I did to uh, help me uh, design the suspension. And it looks kind of confusing, uh, but I tried to do the simplest drawing I could to help me out. Um, but let's say this pivot right here and this pivot right there are these two in the picture. And as you can see, those are the two that are on the, uh, we'll call the subframe the spindles on this side and so these two pivots right here are in this picture on the outside of the spindle 
And then this line in the center, that's going to be, the, uh, call it the steering rod that comes down. The steering racks is over here. So this pivot and this pivot are in the picture shown here. This drawing, I've pulled up my, my bad drawing because this is a wrong geometry. This is what I originally started with. And I, I figured I'd pull this up to show you um, what I did wrong and uh, help illustrate it. But as you can see, this line and this line are not parallel. Um, how it drops down back here. This is where I originally mounted the rack was much lower. And so what I first did is if I turn on these lines, okay, so if I go from this pivot to this pivot and then draw a line just kind of off into infinity and then this pivot and this pivot and draw a line off into infinity and they come up here and they meet way over here, up here. So that's the, that's the kind of the nexus of these two lines right here. What you want, and what obviously you don't have, is you want this line and this line on your steering rack. You want that to come all the way up here and intersect with these lines. That's going to be, I think, your virtual pivot is what they call it. I could be wrong. But as you can see, this thing comes down here and it, and it hits right here. So my steering geometry was way off. So if I turn off the lines and turn on my up, so this is now the suspension compressed. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of uh, negative camber, but it's hard to see. This red line is my steering rod. So the, the rack is right here. It's coming up. This is under full compression. So this is a full uh, kind of extreme example. But this pivot is the same as that pivot coming up here. So you can see I'm way off way off here. So let me turn off the down, the blue. So see how my pivots are way off? Right there. That's that's pretty far off. How far is that? Just on this drawing right here. I was, you know, 0.89, almost an inch. Not quite an inch, almost an inch off. So that gave me on full compression, gave me about three inches on a side of toe in, which was totally undrivable. So then we'll go to the other side. We'll go to the, I call this the perfect side. Not quite perfect, but it's as close as I can get. Now the difference is this pivot and this pivot and these two are the same. They're going to be the same position as this drawing on the bag. But you can see on these, see how my rod for my steering is a lot more horizontal to my A arms as opposed to this one. And if I go back and turn the lines on, see how this comes up and it's very, very close. It is not quite there, but that is as close as I can get it right there. So that helped me place the rack. It helped me determine the height of the rack here. And then if I turn off down and turn on up, turn off those lines there. You can see that pivot is in the exact same spot. Let me turn off. Let me turn on down. So you can see as these two move up to this position and this one moves up to that position, that is in the exact same spot. There is almost no overlay on that. Whereas you look at this one over here, it's a gap. 900 thousandths gap right there. So this was the remake of the suspension to remount the steering box in the right location. And I couldn't have figured it out any other way other than doing these kind of dot diagrams here to figure out my angles. Um, anyway, that's how I did it. So I went from this, which was horribly bad, undrivable, to this, which is how it is now. And it really was a difference of just raising this one pivot I had to raise that pivot up. Not much. Maybe I had to raise it up maybe a little bit over an inch right here. And that made all the difference in the world. So geometry is very important when it comes to designing your front suspension. Another issue I ran into was between this mount 
and that mount where this pivot is on this rack has to be in line with that. And because the width here was fixed because of the width, I wanted my wheelbase or the, the width of the front end, um, this line right here was narrower than my rack was. So I had to take the rack apart and take about an inch off the travel of that. So it didn't really, it didn't really mess up the amount of steering I have. It's probably a little bit less, but I wanted the pivots in line right there. So I don't know if you can see it as you go straight on. Imaginary line right there. The pivot for the steering box is right there. So here's a shot of my spindle assembly. And uh, like I said before, so this piece right here, that's easy go and this C piece right here, that's also easy go. And the original suspension beam or the front beam was mounted right here. So I just cut that off and I've added this tab up top to mount my heim joint. And then this tab down here to mount my, uh, my poly joint there. And this distance I wanted as long as possible, but I didn't want to interfere with the wheel here or the wheel up there. So I made that as, as, uh, as far as part as I could, and that gives me a little bit more stability this way. Um, so, and then as far as adjustability, the Heim joint has adjustability, so I can adjust my camber that way. So does this bottom poly joint there. And then my caster, I'll show you on this other side. So here on the other side, Here's my heim joint right here coming in on the top A arm, which is this piece. And here's the top of the, of the spindle uh, right there. And what I did is these two mounts I made wider so I can stack washers in there. And so what you can do is take washers from this side and put them over here. And that's going to adjust your uh, caster angle uh, so you can get that. Um, but I found that the easy goes... Uh, sitting on the ground is about 10 degrees, 10 degrees back this way. And that's how I have it there. So I can, I can move these around to uh, adjust my steering. Uh, but I found that it, just leaving it at 10 degrees actually works very well. Uh, so that's how, how I did that there. So another design uh, feature that I did, a lot of off-road buggies will cant this, this kind of horizontal line right there, this pivot line. They'll put a little bit of a degree in there. So as these swing up, swing up they kind of go up and back. Um, I left it horizontal uh, because I didn't have a lot of room. I have frame right here, which is totally dirty, but I have frame right there. I didn't want the wheel to come up and into. So I left these horizontal. And then how I mounted it to the golf cart, I don't know if it shows, but the frame comes back and mounts to the factory location where the spring, uh, spring perches are. So uh, the Easy Go used to have two springs that came off here and they mounted right there. And then I actually had to put another mount, I don't know if you can see with the light here, right here. Um, so I put a tab and then there's actually a tube that goes across and I have basically um, clamps right here that clamp that tube. So the top frame comes in, clamps this tube, the bottom frame comes in and goes to that spring perch right there. And then I have another mount that comes off, that holds, comes off this front here that the spring is attached to. So I have my spring perch right here and then it goes up to the top of the frame. Get it up here on camera. So this is the top of the easy go frame. So you can see there's not much frame that EasyGo gives you. Um, it's basically just this right here. And so all of this is new that I had to add. Um, but I made it modular so I can unbolt it on the top, unbolt it there, and unbolt it down here. And basically the whole front end comes off uh, as a kit, uh, which was neat. So another issue or thing that I uh, had to deal with was the shock here. Now I, I lucked out with the spring rate. Um, basically I just used the shocks that were on that, that buggy and they, they turned out to be pretty close. They're actually a little soft for my needs. Um, they're a dual 
dual rate spring here, but you can see right here, I took the whole shock apart and added a three quarter inch aluminum spacer. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but right there, because uh, I had this maxed all the way out and it was just a little soft, a little low. Uh, so I added that spacer and it brought the front end, front end up uh, a little bit more. Uh, I could have ordered another spring and uh, and stiffened it up a little bit, but I liked the softness. I didn't just didn't like how low it was sitting, so I added that spacer right there. But that's just uh, another, you know, as you're doing these engineering things and these custom builds, you just run into things like that where you just got to kind of find ways to make it work. And that's what I did there. I added that little spacer. So another piece that I had to do quite a bit of engineering on was this steering shaft right here. So this is where the factory location is for the steering. So the steering wheel is up there and it mounts on this piece right here. And this is a stock easy go steering shaft, but I had to shorten it up down here. I don't know if you can see that there's a weld right here. Um, and this is the uh, expansion joiner. This is the spline shaft that goes in here. And it comes down to, uh, let's see if you can see it here, that guy right there. So it's quite a bit of an angle for that one. Um, but I only wanted two joints, one joint there and then one joint there. I could have done a third and had it, had it a little bit more of a relief angle, but I didn't want to do that. The problem I ran into was it's really close to that pivot right there. And uh, actually it did have the notch to the frame, see how the frame drops down there. Um, so that took some, some engineering there. Because of the design and the geometry of the suspension, it really dictated where that steering rack's gonna go. And so this I just had to make work because I couldn't move the rack. Um, it would screw up my, my geometry on that. So that's just kind of where it ended up. And it works, it works good. So you can see it turning right there. So. so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if there's any other information of uh, this golf cart or any other, other builds I've done, let me know in the comments and I can do those videos. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching.